The one thing I want to talk about, and this is something I feel like is maybe a bit overlooked, is the Galaxy A71. So in a time right now where the iPhone SE is kind of the, I don't, I don't want to call it the leader, but right now with the iPhone SE priced at 400 bucks, it is one of the best deals you can get right now for a smartphone. Uh, one, because of its chipset, right? Really high performance, really, really well performing. Uh, its camera is good. It's not the best, but it's it's a great camera still for its $400 price point. Yes, it does have a couple downsides to it. Its display, its battery isn't the best, um, but otherwise it's still a good deal. And my hope was that the Pixel 4a was going to be coming out relatively soon so that it could compete with the iPhone SE, but that might not be happening until July, mid-July, or at least an announcement in mid-July without an actual release until August, which is kind of upsetting because why are we waiting so long to, to release um, to release a phone that supposedly is done and is ready for production? But I don't know. So uh, it begs the question, what about the Galaxy A71? If you're somebody who's not looking for an iPhone and you're looking for an Android phone and you're thinking about the $400 price point or the $400 price point is kind of your top end. What about the Galaxy A71? For you guys who are not aware of the A71, uh, this, this phone carries the same chipset that the Pixel 4a is going to carry. And it has quite a few other features. So we'll talk about it. And uh, let me point this out as well. There's this little uh, tidbit right up here where it says 4G is still great. And I think this is what they're going to try to aim at in this article, because this particular A71 is not the 5G version, although there is a 5G version coming out, which is apparently called the Galaxy A71 5G. But this is the, the 4G version at a under $400 price point. So the Galaxy A71 is Samsung's true iPhone SE competitor, but the U.S. model is ruined by 5G. It... it it makes me smile because it doesn't surprise me. You know, you guys know how I feel about 5G and the big push for it, even though it's really not necessary at this point. But um, let's let's get into it. So the 4G enabled Snap 730 version of the Galaxy A71 is the perfect mid-range phone. That's a big statement right there to call it the perfect mid-range phone. And is it because the Pixel 4a is not out yet? I don't know. I actually haven't had a chance to read this article. So Samsung released the A71 earlier this year with the phone featuring a fresh new design and upgraded internals. The Galaxy A series has grown from strength to strength in recent years. And the A51 was the best-selling Android phone globally in quarter one of 2020. So that's a huge milestone for Samsung, particularly when you consider that the A51 isn't even that great. And uh, I looked at the A51 I had considered it, but because it has a 600 series chipset, I kind of was like, ah, I'll wait for something that'll come in the 700 series chipset. And that's where the A71 fills its place. It has a vibrant display and modern design. This is the A51 they're talking about, but the chipset doesn't hold up in day-to-day -day use and the camera is average at best. So that's that's a thing to point out here is the chipset doesn't hold up in day-to-day -day use. Um, you know, I have my... Uh, TCL 10 Pro right here. And my TCL 10 Pro has a 600 series chipset and it's not bad. It's it's actually pretty serviceable, but it does hiccup, you know, every once in a while. Um, this is where the Galaxy A71 comes in. The A71 has robust internals and even bigger screen, outstanding battery life, great cameras, and the best part is the phone is launching in the U.S. later this year. Only one downside, the variant that Samsung is releasing in the U.S. is the 5G-enabled version, and that particular model is set to retail for 600 bucks. So that's the thing. At, at a $600 price point, I... it. For me, it's not a, I wouldn't even consider it then at that, at that price point. But if, uh, so, so here's, here's the next part of this, um, 
article is, or the next sentence in this article is the 4G edition of the phone, meanwhile, is on sale on Amazon for 365. But because it is the global variant, you lose out on warranty. So that is something to consider, but I pulled it up here as well. So um, let me actually increase this a bit. So uh, this A71, 128 gigs of internal storage, six gigs of RAM. And so it is, you can use it in the US for LTE, has four, it has quad cameras in the back. You know, look at the the display is a pretty big display, punch hole, you know, on the top center. Um, Android 10, 4,000 milliamp hour battery. And it says here it's factory unlocked. So you could use it with AT&T and T-Mobile, but it's not compatible with CDMA such as Verizon and Sprint. So, so a couple of things to consider there, but look at that price. 365. I actually put it in my cart just to see what it would total out at after taxes and whatever. And it was still under 400 bucks. It was like 387 or something. So at that price, that's not bad. And that's not, that's something that I, I didn't think about as far as even recommend, uh, recommending to people, especially for somebody who might not want, um, an iPhone, right? And they're looking for something that's Android, that's maybe something a little more recent. Uh, I believe this also has a micro SD card, right? For expandable storage. Um, I, I'm, I, you know what? They might mention it in the article here. So Samsung has mentioned, Samsung has mentioned that it won't launch the 4G enabled version of the Galaxy A71 in the U in the U.S. and it's missing out on a huge opportunity in the process. The $400 iPhone SE has turned the value market on its head, and with the Pixel 4a on the horizon, this article is like four or five days old now. So. I don't think the news was out yet that they were going to launch the 4A later in July or even August, which again is, it's such a bummer, but uh, the competition in the mid-tier category is heating up. Samsung doesn't have a compelling enough answer in this segment. The Galaxy A51 is available unlocked for $399, but as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't hold up to scrutiny, particularly against the iPhone SE and the upcoming Pixel 4A. I just noticed I forgot to enlarge or switch the screens here, but that, that brings me to another question for you guys. Think about that. So would you rather spend $400 for a Galaxy A51 that has a lower chipset? I believe it has a smaller battery. I believe the cameras aren't as good. Or would you buy this international version of the A71 for $365 that you're not going to get a warranty on? Would you take that risk? So in my, for me, personally, for me, if I had to choose between the two, I would go for the A71 without the warranty. I understand if, if that isn't what you would do, but um, I can't pass up on something that's going to have a better processor and a better camera and a cheaper price at the end of the day. Even if it's just by like 20 or 30 bucks, I would still pick the A71, the international A71 over this A51. Okay. Let's, let's kind of continue on here. So, um, the Galaxy A71 does not have those issues. It's powered by the same Snapdragon 730. That's that's a chipset that's set to be featured in the 4A. You get a 4,500 milliamp hour battery, but didn't this say, didn't this Amazon one say 4,000 milliamp hour? Can somebody in chat, if you get a chance, check on that? Um, yeah, because I'm not sure, but still 4,000, 4,500 milliamp hour, it's still a big battery. I mean, obviously I would love to have 4,500 instead of 4,000, but let's continue on here. Uh, that easily delivers over a day's worth of use and a 64 megapixel primary camera that takes great photos. The biggest selling point is that you get a massive 6.7 inch AMOLED display on the A71. So for somebody that wants a bigger phone, that wants a big display, that's going to use it for media consumption, the A71 is probably a good choice here. Uh, again, having a 730 chipset on there, I'm sure it's not going to be a slouch. You know, it's it's. I feel like it'll perform fairly well, considering I've been using the TCL 10 Pro with a 675 chipset. And yes, even though it lags, and even though it's not my choice for a phone that lags, it's still not bad for someone who's a light user. So I can imagine a 730 chipset is going to fare better. Um, Okay, basically the A71 has a massive screen, excellent battery life and great cameras. And in most parts of the world, the phone is available for around the $400 price point. The A71 version that is set to launch in the US is powered by the Exynos 
uh, 980. So even, okay, I didn't realize that. So the A71 that's going to have 5G on it, it's not even a Qualcomm Snapdragon. And while it has the same level of performance as the 730, the fact that it will retail for 600 bucks makes it a non-starter in the value category. And I can't disagree with that. With the 4A allegedly launching at just 350, there's just no reason to spend nearly double that for the A71. And that's a good point. I don't know what Samsung is thinking. Again, it's a markup because of 5G just doesn't make any sense to me. And while Samsung is positioning 5G as a differentiator for the A71, the connectivity standard just isn't ready for mainstream use yet. And again, something I've been preaching time after time after time, 5G is not at the, the place it needs to be just yet. You shouldn't be buying a phone based on 5G. Don't make your decision on buying a phone because of 5G. It's it's not the priority that you need to be taking right now. Sure, 5G is rolling out to more US cities, but connectivity is still limited to a few sections within each city, and it'll be a while before 5G usage is anywhere near ubiquitous. So for now, it makes sense for Samsung to release the 4G-only variant of the A71 in the US, and even if Samsung doesn't decide to bring the Galaxy A71 to the country, you should consider picking up the global variant at Amazon. For 365, you're getting a lot of value here. Here's the thing is I'm I'm actually a little tempted to, to buy this phone and uh, see how good it is, compare it to the TCL 10 Pro I have, compare the cameras. I think that would be a great camera comparison. I mean, the TCL 10 Pro is a $450 phone and this is under 400 bucks. Um, it might be, it might, I might pull the trigger on it just to test it out, test the camera out, test the battery life, test the performance. Cause I, I really want to see how well a 730 does. So it gives me an idea of how the pixel 4a is going to be. I don't know. I don't know how you guys feel about it. I, I, it, in, in a way I, I have thought about it for a bit and I kind of have just set it aside. Cause you know, I just have a ton of other things happening right now, but, um, I don't know. I might give it a shot. Anyway, let me, I'll go into chat here. We'll, we'll talk about it. Deepak says, uh, I had the A70, very nice phone apart from the terrible fingerprint reader on the screen. That's a good point too. I forgot about that. That A71 has a front fingerprint reader, right? And it's the same awful one, isn't it? Uh, I wonder how it fares against my TCL 10 Pro. Um, Grant says A7 or A7, the A7 series, now A70 series has always been Samsung's best A series phone in the mid tier pricing. Good to know. Uh, Enforce says, What did I say, Jerome? I don't remember what you said, Enforce, but welcome to the stream. I think uh, I'm about to, oh, here we go. A71 gives more for a given price. It is a 400, 4,500 milliamp hour battery uh, with 25 watt uh, charging. That's good to know. And Forrest, welcome to the stream, man. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice for you to chime in. Grant says, don't get the US models. Yeah, why would you? Why would you spend 600 bucks on the US model knowing that you can get this version for 365 bucks? I don't know, guys. I might I might even pull the trigger on it today and get that and test it out and um, give you guys an analysis of that phone. That is not a bad phone for under 400 bucks. Um, and I, I, I guess it would give me a chance to test out Samsung's UI or one UI, right? I haven't used it in a long time. The last Samsung phone I've owned was a S9, S9 plus and the regular S9. I had both of them. Grant says A71 will destroy the TCL. I, I have no doubt. Um, and th that's really a good point. That's, I mean, think, I think right now a lot of manufacturers are a little confused about where to price their phones at because you have you have this TCL 10 Pro that's priced at 450 and yes it does have some good pros to it right build quality is really good display is nice but how is that even going to compare to this A71 that's priced at 365 um that has very similar or it has a better chipset the display is going to be great on that too cameras are probably going to be better on it and then Samsung wants to release a 5G version of the A71 with a different chipset that they're going to price at 600 bucks. That's crazy. That like, what kind of pricing model is this? I I feel like a lot of people are a lot of manufacturers are a little confused right now about where to price their phones at, and hopefully they will start getting a more consistent. Well, maybe it's a good thing that right now they're really confused because then we 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 vote with our wallets, right? And we buy the best phone at that best price range.
Cause there's a lot of, and I mean, and then when you start talking about more expensive phones, right. I've talked about this. I talked about this yesterday. Um, or someone in chat brought it up yesterday, the TCL 10 pro at 450. Well, why wouldn't you just buy the one plus seven T at 499 brand new right now and get an 800 series chipset, get a, I, I just, it doesn't make any sense. I would buy, I would buy the seven T over the TCL 10 pro in a heartbeat at a 499 price tag versus 450 bucks.